Beyond Your Backyard is brought to you in part by Montgomery County in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Southwest Virginia. Montgomery County, Virginia. Go to town. Hi, I'm Eric the Travel Guy. On this edition, we brought you to the island nation of Jamaica. That means blue mountains, green grottos, and a red striped beer, and so much more. Oh, and we're gonna do that too. That's all next on Beyond Your Backyard. My name is Eric Hastings. Yeah, that's me. And for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to travel, and I still do today. Airlines, hotels, cruises, new places, delicious food, I love all of it. And that's why I've been traveling the world professionally, doing the very same things you can do for more than a decade. So please consider this a personal invitation to join me each week on my mission to get you traveling more than ever before. Because while the world is a pretty big place to explore, your next vacation is waiting to be discovered not just around the globe, but perhaps just around the corner. Let me introduce you to the places, people, and secrets I've discovered that remind me just how exciting it is to be alive, and hopefully will inspire you to get out of the house and into your next great adventure. I am Eric the Travel Guy, and this is Beyond Your Backyard. Thank you for watching and welcome to Jamaica. You know, perhaps like you, my first visit to this Caribbean island was on a day trip from a cruise itinerary. It wouldn't be until years later and a longer stay that I would begin to truly appreciate the authenticity of Jamaica. You know, some have proclaimed that this island has a vibe that's unique and found nowhere else in the world. Well, we seek to uncover that special something that brings millions of visitors here each year. We will go zip lining over Duns River Falls. Uh, yes, we'll learn the history and culture by exploring unbelievably beautiful underground caves. And we will sample menu items from the locals. You're going to love those as well. So I suggest you get comfortable and let the rhythm of the Caribbean breeze transport you to an island paradise. Let's get started. So this is the island of Jamaica, located in the Caribbean Sea. From west to east, you'll find the Cayman Islands, Cuba, Turks and Caicos, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. Major air gateways into Jamaica include Kingston, that's the capital on the southern shores, and Montego Bay, which is located in the north. The majority of visitors to Jamaica stay and explore the shores of the north coast, from Rick's Cafe in Negril to Ocho Rios. So to learn a bit more about the story of this island, I started my exploration at the Green Grotto Caves. Why do people come here? They want to know about the Jamaican history, the heritage, and want to know about the geological features of Jamaica. Not to mention how they survived the cave yep. and the habitats that live within that are important to our ecosystem and the environment. In the Caribbean, there's lots of places to go, but there's something unique about Jamaica that I can't quite put my finger on, and you guys talk a lot about it. What is it? It has a lot to do with the people. It's all about the people, the culture, the music, the lifestyle. So we have a mixture of various uh, races, like from Africa, North, South America, and Asia, cultural background, cultural mix. And all cultures bring their parts of their world to Jamaica, making a blending pot. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we are like a laid back group of people that enjoys life to the fullest. Why did these caves exist? It was created beneath the sea roughly by a combination of dead aquatic life. Mm -hmm. And then what is believed is that a volcano beneath Jamaica is what shifted the tectonic plates and forcing the massive cave from under the sea. Mm -hmm. And it became a hideout for many generations of people mm -hmm. and now an attraction today. How long does it take to go through them? It's about a 45 minute tour. That's it, so pretty easy. It's pretty easy. And where are we, by the way? We're now in Discovery Bay, St. Anne, Jamaica. St. Anne, which is between Montego Bay and where, where are well, we on the north we coast? We are very close to Trelawney. Got it. Close to the Chilani Kushi Pier. Chilani is also close to Montego Bay. And we're about half an hour towards Ocherius. Well, let's go take a look, man. Why not? Jamaican history has a, has a unique story to it, doesn't it? That is true. Columbus was told by Cubans they were in the land of gold. So his arrival in Jamaica was actually for riches. This is 1494? 1494. But eventually, the Tainos, they thought the Spaniards were gods, offered hospitality, but then they became slaves. So that led to the Spanish taking over in 1509, so we became Santiago. 
Right. And what the, the Spaniards did in Jamaica, it was a storage facility at first. But they realized the agricultural background, it's good, the, the soil is good, it's fertile. So they started to do banana in 1510, didn't do well. So they brought the West Africans in in 1517 and do sugar plantation business. Why didn't the bananas do well? Because you find banana takes a long time to produce. Got it. Sugarcane is more quicker and you can do a lot more sugarcane yeah. than banana. And plus, it makes rum. Right. Rum is like a big deal, right. you know? Do people get, do they get a little claustrophobic? Their areas were, the space is a little narrow, but it's not really a claustrophobic feeling because there's a lot of ventilation, natural ventilation within the case. But what if I tell you that this was a part of a James Bond film by the name of Live and Let Die? Oh, yeah. So they shot the final scenes of him being chased through this cave. Mm -hmm. And then when I take you to the depths of the Green Gutter Lake, that's where they did the final part of the movie. How long did Ian Fleming live here? Did he live here full time? He lived there full time. I think he was a part of the military mm -hmm. in England. But he fell in love with Jamaica, and he started his first James Bond year, Dr. No, Dr. No. Sean Connery. Funny. What do people, when they come in for the first time, what do, you, what do you see? What do they say? Many people, as they enter the cave, they're in awe. Yeah. They're like, entering this light into a world of its own. It is amazing, it is spacious, and they're like, they're seeing the habitat movements of the bats. But there's some parts of the cave you can just be extremely quiet. Mm -hmm. Listen to the flow, the dripping of water, Bloop. the sound of the bats, mm -hmm. the animal life. It's a, it's a very different feeling you get when you inside this cave. All of this uh, structure here was a part of an 80s nightclub. They had a nightclub inside the caves. Oh, you're kidding me. I'm serious. That's cool. So we clean the caves of any garbage. Mm -hmm. We don't kill trees, don't burn bushes, mm -hmm. sensor lights. They only come on when there's a tour. Mm -hmm. How many people go through here a day? It can be up to maybe 1,000 people or maybe 500 on a crucial day, on an average day, maybe like 200 people. Got it. People hid inside the cave, African ancestors, Taino Indians of South America, Spaniards, even pirates, once used as a safe haven. You see, the English, they came in 1655, May 10. Mm -hmm. General Robert Van Nebel's Admiral William Penn's army. But one particular man was here, Cristobal Arnalbo Assassin. Please watch your head. He was the last Spanish governor of the island of Jamaica. His idea was to do this, hide out in this cave until he gets an opportunity to escape. And surprisingly, there's a passage he used to go three miles out to an exit on the beach, located aboard, and use it to go 90 miles to our neighbor Cuba. And that passage is on your right. Oh, wow. That's what we call today the escape routes. The system of the cave is actually the two caves. There is the current one you're in by the name of Runaway Caves. Mm -hmm. It was named after the African ancestors, primarily used by them as a secret hideout until they had the opportunity to flee to the hills. They were known as people of the hills, so they tried to go to the hills, create their villages, mm -hmm. create their armies to rebel against the English. However, the cave after this is the popular known Green Grotto. Watch your head. Which greenery has to do with a color on the rocks, two types of things on the rocks, oxidized copper and the water plant algae. Grotto is Latin meaning cave with underground water. And in fact, if both caves are joined together, it goes 10 miles in length, 28 square miles in width. It's like a, a hidden secret revealed. When they come for the first time, what do people, they get inside these caves, what do they say to you? They are amazed, they're in awe, they, 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 they fall in love. Coming here gives you an experience of the past, that you realize that ancestors have been through, where they used to hide, what they used to do, and, and how useful the cave was for them. Green Grotto Cave is a 40 feet depth. 40 cave, feet. 40 feet. And they go as far as creating some steps to help you to access this cave. For the ancestors, they use roots. We are now in the Green Grotto Cave. You're in that cave where the lake system, combination of salt and fresh, 19 feet, 6 meters depth, 15 degrees Celsius, 60 Fahrenheit. Now, people can't get in this water, though, when they come to visit, right? Well, they used to, but what they're looking into now is that um, there's a lot of bats living above the lake, so it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be safe for people to jump in. So yeah. there are bats above us right now? Yes, there are bats above us right now. Where? Now, if I could look carefully, I might be able to find something. Ah, right there. Look at those guys. Right there. Oh, they don't like the light. No, they are nocturnal, like the Batman himself, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Good Anytime. to meet you, man. Like so many nations in the Caribbean, 
As you explore, you'll note the poverty of Jamaica. Some visitors here are reluctant to leave the confines of their gated resort. The local economy's success is based on the exports of sugar, Blue Mountain coffee, and the mining industry. But tourism also plays a major role here. From large, all-inclusive resorts to quaint seaside hotels, the tourism infrastructure is firmly in place, which is yet another reason this island is attractive to foreign vacation thrill-seekers. English is spoken here by the locals, as well as regional dialects, and most Jamaicans understand the importance of tourism in their country. Country. What can they expect when they get here? You're going to expect well-trained guide, well-schooled horses, and th the experience is memorable. It's, it's an experience of a lifetime. You get here, you're meted by a friendly and vibrant hostess. You know, they point out places of interest, what to do, what not to do. You mount your horses, you go off into the trail ride, which is very scenic. Mm -hmm. Then you get back to the stable, change in here somewhere, then you go plunge in the ocean on those majestic bees, I tell you. Okay. They only have one horsepower, so all you got to do is have a good time. <laughs> you just hang out. Yeah. Why do you keep coming to work every day for you? Because I love to put a smile in people's face. I love to see when they have a good time, they do get value for money. You talk to them, they want to come back. Some of them don't even want to leave. How long should people stay when they come here for the first time? Five days a week is good. You know, two days in Montego Bay, another two days in, in Negril, another day in Ochi, and then you just wrap things up and try to leave, really. Time to play, there's a reason you say that, right? Yes, it's a very important to us here at Chuckle that we cater for all the parties involved. We want to have something for all age, for all demographics. Once you're on the island, there's something here at Chuckle for you to do. Whether it's horseback riding, whether it is doing the ATV safaris, the zip planning, or the river tubing, there's something here at Chuckle for everyone to participate in. Well, and it's worth noting that, I mean, there are other companies that do what Chuckle does, but the reality of it is, you start hedging your bets on, you can't afford to get it wrong when you're on vacation. How many locations in the country are we working with here? We're working with about 15 different locations. You have in Falmouth, you have in Montego Bay, you have in Hanover. What we try to do is to have a chocolate location to close to every tourism area. So you don't have to drive for 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour. The word chocker is from uh, the sport polo. There's five chucker in a polo match. Got it. And each break is called a chucker. So that's what it is. That's it. And they, they come, the owner started out by playing a polo. And then for one evening they were on the horses having a good match. And after that, they just decided to take the horses for a swim in the water. And there comes our first door horseback ride and swim. So somebody said, I think people that are coming to visit would like to do this. Yes. That was it? Yes. This was 35 years ago? 35 years ago, yeah. And, and, and people, when they come back, what do they tell you? when they get off their first tour. What do they say? Wow, this is amazing. I will do this all over again. And of course, I will surely recommend it to my friends and family. You come to Jamaica, you're obviously coming for the water. Let's talk about Jamaica itself. What else, from an outdoor perspective, do you recommend that they do? First, I'd want for them to get off property and experience real Jamaica, true Jamaica. Because of course, we all know the resorts are beautiful, they're comfortable, the staff, they're friendly, the food is good. But to get a sense of place, you must leave the resort. What does it mean to be native Jamaican? It means everything to us. I'm, I'm a proud Jamaican. Yeah. Yes, and I really feel good and embrace the visitors, and I just want them to be in our island just to see what we have to offer. It's much more than the sun, the sea, and the sand. It's just the friendliness of the people. The environment itself is friendly. It's so fresh here. Yeah. So just to be a native Jamaican, it's just to be free-spirited. You know, you wake up, you see the sunshine, you know, the fresh air, the fruits here are good, the vegetables are fresh. It's just a good place to be. I am a proud Jamaican. There's an authenticity here it's hard to describe as well with the people. Mm -hmm. But they authentically do care about their environment, don't you think? Yes, we are caring and loving people and we, we love to give. And one of the things that Jamaicans give willingly and freely is a smile. Yeah, but I'll bet people come and do this experience yeah. and then they do it and they come back, don't they? All the time. Yeah. It's because of the experience, because of the friendliness of the staff, because the location itself is just so comfortable, it's just so relaxing. I know you guys are on vacation. We complete the vacation for you because we're not putting on a face. This is just who we are, right. whether on camera or off camera. We are just sweet and natural and loving people. It's not a show. We're real. So you're saying this is how you are at dinner tonight? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is how I am. I actually believe and that. And they're <laughs> off camera. I'm not putting on a show That's here. True. This is who it's I am. true. I believe that. I yes. do. I believe that. That is what separates us from all the others. We are just real, natural, loving, and caring people. 
It's worth noting the pace in Jamaica is relaxed. I spent time at Good Hope Estate located in Falmouth. Good Hope boasts more than 2,000 acres of lush plant life, primary jungle, scenic views, majestic Martha Bray River, as well as the historic Great House. Once a working village and sugar plantation in the 1700s, Good Hope Estate is the Caribbean's first and only nature adventure park with an unparalleled variety of adventures and cultural experiences. After all the fun, I was exhausted. But back to work, people. Time and time again, I visit Jamaica, and what I continue to learn is that the visitor experiences, you know, the things you're going to be doing when you come to visit, they're personal and they're fun. Rigid schedules turn into more of a guideline, so to speak. Some call it island time. The surroundings and the activities lend itself to soaking it in and taking it slow. By the way, if you're looking for more of an active way to get close to the scenery, I have a suggestion. You get on an ATV. Let's do this, people. Ah! After a short and thorough safety lesson, I traversed the rugged terrain with an expert guide. I loved it. So to keep the high going, the crew and I made a visit to Dunn's River Falls. This is one of the most popular attractions in Jamaica, but I decided to see the falls from a different vantage point. Listen, there are these places in the world where you just simply have to do it. Of course, this is Dunn's River Falls, and some of you may have already hiked up the falls before, but one of the newest attractions here is to take a zip line over the falls. It's pretty remarkable. After a lot of laughs, a healthy shot of adrenaline, I got out of the safety harness, barely, and was ready for an authentic Jamaican meal. In 2014, I met a fascinating entrepreneur named Annie, whose passion for Jamaican cuisine is so overwhelming, I knew I had to return. Why do I love this place specifically? What is going on here? All right, well, first of all, it is an authentic Jamaican experience. Really passionate about Jamaica and Jamaican food. And so every day I try and do something new, um, add something, obviously Jamaican, but with a twist to it. Yeah, what do you got mm -hmm. here? What okay, are we starting? so we started with this. This is actually vegan. Mm -hmm. And this is a miniature bami. Yeah. Okay, and you know Bami is made from cassava. Right. We do a mango chutney, which okay. is on the bottom. And then I'm sure you've heard about our aki. The national fruit, what is it? Aki. Got it. Where does it grow? Right here, we actually have a you tree have out in the yard, yeah. yeah. Which we usually have with saltfish, but just to show you how we've done it a little different here, we curry it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's a crispy with the sweet and then the savory with the curry. Yeah? Oh, my God. That's amazing. Oh, my God. That's phenomenal. It's called Jano. Jano. What is, what's going on in here? This what? is what we call a coconut jelly. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> but this one is my favorite, for sure. This is what we call salt fish, cod mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. And then we do it in a pickle. So let me set it up for you. It may be spicy, so be careful. Even better. This is salt fish with all the pickled onions. And there you go. Yep. Blow that right in. The whole thing? The whole thing. I don't think keep the whole thing. I don't have that big of a mouth. <laughs> really fresh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's not raw fish, it's, it's salted cured fish. What does it mean to be authentic Jamaican? As it pertains to the culinary scene, we'll start there. Our motto is out of many one people. Mm -hmm. So you find that we include so many other cultures in our cooking. Yeah, and when we do a curry, at least when I do a curry here, I use all the Jamaican herbs and spices, fresh. Mm -hmm. And then I also mix in the Indian curries with it. Like the garam masala, the cumin, the, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. But I'm still using the Jamaican scotch bonnet, the garlic, onions, pimento, thyme, ginger. And everything is basically seasoned and, and, and prepped with that. People, they come here and they think, oh no, we're, we're not gonna eat goat or we're not gonna eat oxtail. <laughs> you know, seriously, they want right. jerk chicken. And I said to them, no, just try it. Which is Which fine, really, you yeah. should do. I mean, yeah, yeah, you have to do that. We're but... known for that, you know, but there, there's so much more. And authentic Jamaican is we do everything with love. All right, what do we have? Let's, let's move right. on, what do we got? If you come to Misty's, I would highly recommend what we call a shek pan. And that's a shek pan, eh? Okay. So in the old days, when I was a little girl, my grandmother always used to pack up my shek pan because you'd spend all day at church. Got it. So your shed pan was this little pan that enamel that kept your lunch warm and it had everything. It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas. That's the world famous oxtail. I promise you, Miss T, somebody right now is watching this going, 
I gotta get one of those. Okay. I'm sorry, is this rice and peas we call rice this? Rice and peas. Now look at that, well, look at that get, sauce. You have to get some beans and some spinach. Yeah. The spinach are actually, we make that out of flour. Oh, got it, oh, got With it. a little coconut again. Yep. And we just roll it together into a dough. And then we spin them out with a lot of love, and there you have your spinners. And then the beans are actually broad beans. They're broad beans, okay, got yeah. it. Am I gonna find That's bones in here or no? Yeah, you find bones. Jamaican, we love to eat with bone, eh? Yeah. With the goat, you have to add a little chutney. Oh, I love chutney. So you see how we mix it up a little bit? I love it, yep. yeah. If you're making a curry goat, what are you using? What part of the goat are you using? I mean, I, I like the part closer to the rib, because it's really bony and nice. Mm -hmm. But you know, the curry, mm -hmm. there's, the, there's, the, there's the heat. Mm -hmm. But it's so mild. Mm -hmm. I mean, I took that bite a minute ago, and mm -hmm. now, oh, it's mm -hmm. lovely, lovely. And this I is... tell people all the time, we come to Miss T's, pretend you're at home, but this is the best part. I know. So you take up that bone. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm. See, when you do it, it looks mm. elegant. Mm. I don't know how you do that. Okay. Mm. I hope you enjoy everything. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you, ma'am. Mm. Most people would be like, you don't want to eat goat or oxtail. Well, it's, it doesn't appear to be a very approachable thing right. in some cultures. You're like, well, sure. I'm not eating that. Yeah, but yeah. If it's done right, it's yeah. delicious. delicious. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So now we get to. Oh my gosh. The rundown. Now hold on, you said rundown. What does that mean? So rundown is, is we get the coconut milk and we cook it down for a long time. Really? And then it comes to a cream. So this is the same coconut, but the dry one. That's it. We grate it, we juice the milk out of it, and then we, we cook it down. So we call it rundown. How long? It can take 20, 30 minutes before it starts to come to that cream. To really come to that cream. Yeah. So we use a lot of scotch bonnet pepper, which, you know, the green one gives the flavor. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't burst it. You just put it in the pot and cook it down with it to give it that flavor. Okay. And then the ripe one, which I had earlier, is what yep. we cut up and, and eat it, yeah? Do you, you eat the ripe one, which turns red? Which turns yellow. Yellow. So that's your rundown oh, shrimp. Come on. Mm -hmm. um, um. Mm -hmm. What's it mean to be Jamaican? There's just something different about Jamaicans, and I think it's because of the warmth of the weather, the beauty of the land, the diversity. I mean, you have the rivers, we have the oceans, we have the mountains, we have... Then we have all these cultures that were kind of, just kind of intertwined into ours, and so it's made us a really interesting set of people. So Jamaicans understand that the visitor is very important. Sure. But at the same time, there's that... Wouldn't you say there's a national pride yeah, that's here? Really, when we're passionate, like you say, we have a pride, we have a passion. In Jamaica, we say we show up. <laughs> <laughs> we're proud to Jamaican, and we want to share that with everyone. It's just everything, the food, the culture, the ambience, the people, the service, where we like to serve. Mm -hmm. There are no two ways about it. Unfortunately, Miss mm -hmm. T, mm -hmm. nobody's watching this interview anymore. They've all left and okay. booked their vacations to Jamaica sure. listening to you talk, so I, I apologize <laughs> for that. So good to see you again. Same here. Thank you for having us. I can't wait Thank to come you. back. So what makes Jamaica unique? Well, I think you now know. It's the gorgeous scenery, that sense of adventure, excitement, and fun, delicious food, and that undeniable Jamaican spirit of its people. I'm Eric the Travel Guy. Thank you for exploring Beyond Your Backyard. That's code for if I have to look ridiculous, so do you. See how that works. <laughs> Listen, you don't get to be a 38 waistline without putting some effort into it, okay? So don't so let the crew get to that. Because no, 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 they'll eat that. Eat that. <laughs> so, They've called a doctor. They call a doctor. Apparently my records have followed me here to Jamaica. <laughs> I can get that so just, oh, there you go. All right, we'll go. All done. Watch this. Let's see, see if they react. We'll go back this way. See what happens. See yeah. they follow. Are they still following us? Yes. Are they? Yes. A bunch of jerks. I've been trying to lose them all day. <laughs> My stunt double. Ding. <laughs> I'm surprised we didn't. We're not serving any rum during this See, interview. Don't talk I, don't, in my language. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. let's. I mean, it's that's, nine o'clock in the morning. That's what I call breakfast. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Hey, 
Hey, George, yeah, good to meet you. Yeah, you <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And good to meet you, oh. sir. Oh, oh you're going to love it here. <laughs> I can't believe it's so staged. It doesn't look staged. I think it does. Do you think bit. it does? <laughs> Just a little bit. Beyond Your Backyard is brought to you in part by Montgomery County in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Southwest Virginia. Montgomery County, Virginia. Go to town. Hi, I'm Eric the Travel Guy. You know, I've been traveling the world professionally for more than a decade, and guess what I've learned? It's that fantastic experiences await you in every corner of the globe, and you don't always have to travel that far to uncover them. So join me each week as we go on and off the beaten path, meet really interesting people, and sample delicious food. And you never know, I don't even have a waterfall like that. We're exploring beyond your backyard.